Hello again, traders. Right. Um, this morning is a really good example of something that I don't think I've ever made a video about. And um, it's something that I probably do subconsciously. And that is how do we know when a potential setup should be abandoned? So, for example, this morning we um, or I tweeted about some potential um, possible trades based on the 6 a.m. H4 close, which is uh, what roughly two hours ago now. Um, and that was uh, I'd uh, identified that EJ here we might get a wick fill, and I mentioned CAD yen as well. I think um, there a wick there that might get filled. And uh, I said if I manage to stay awake because I haven't actually in fact gone back to sleep after waking up about one o'clock this morning. So uh, rather tired to say the least. I, man I said if I managed to stay awake I would uh, trade uh, these down if we got the right signals. Anyway, they didn't. They just carried on going up which is uh, another thing or a, fac a, fac a faculty? No, that's the wrong word. Another... Um, potential, that's potential way trade will go. I can't think of the correct word, but you know, a big wick is a powerful move by uh, the uh, buyers against the sellers, which can mean it will fill or it can also mean it will reverse. And as you know, uh, what you need to keep in in mind as well is obviously where these are support and resistance so you can't just take them clean off the charts you have to go and look at the actual charts off of these dashboards rather you have to go and look at the actual charts and look to see what those are telling you now uh, we know two red candles in this instance is a potential downtrend that could reverse and that's exactly what's happened so the wick fills don't just work you have to go to the lower time frames and then check all your other time frames are in alignment and so on and so forth and make sure that uh, everything is looking good so if we look into EJ I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that and I think this is really important because uh, as a beginner trader it's the sort of thing that you would probably never think of so let's get on to EJ H4 and uh, drill down on these multi time frame RSI histo uh, uh, indicator levels. So at the point here that this uh, new candle opened, the RSI, let's have a look, <clears throat> put that level on there, highlight it. So that is exactly 6am. So at 6am the H4 was had closed red. That's brilliant. It had also closed, oh yeah that is the correct one, red on the H1. This is little bit worrying but uh, not the end of the world and at that point there also closed red on the M30 M15 I doubt will be red uh, there it is there oh it was it did close red as well so that's good so that suggests to me two things we're either just going to collapse or it's going to close green and then what has to happen then is we have to have a new red and that's it it's as simple as that that is how I use multi time frame analysis to check whether we are good to go back in the direction of the wick and it's what's happened is at 6 a.m. it start it was too much too there was too much power there also an easy, a really easy visual indicator of what may be happening and why you may not get your trade to the downside are the MAs. If you're too far away from this 34, bearing in mind when at this point here the 34 was probably way up here because that's the nature of how moving averages work. As you pull over the moving averages um, will move down which makes them a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Because when you are looking at them live, they are so far away, you're thinking, oh, this is, this can't happen. And then when you look at back testing this stuff, it all looks like the MAs are doing their stuff. That is another reason why I don't like trading with MAs. So the MA34 would probably have been way up here, and I'm thinking, yet yeah, it's got a good chance it's going to pull back to those, as opposed to how it's looking now, where the price is right on them. That is because 
the uh, price and the moving averages have caught up with each other. But sorry, I digress a little bit. So anyway, the, the, the most important thing is at 6 a.m., all the time frames were saying we should be short. A little bit worrying on this thing. But um, the important point, as I say, is the RSI histo is my uh, my number one indicator, as it were. I use this because I like it, and I like it because the multi-time frame and the it's a good reference indicator. I mean, if this and this agreed to the red side, then you really are looking to um, uh, have a good possible trade. So when they agree, it's fantastic. When they disagree, uh, always use your three CRs and the RSI histo as your leader. But as you can see, the RSI histo, you could probably use that on its own, nothing else, three CRs or anything else, and just watch the momentum piling. Obviously, also, the time of day is important. In this instance, at 6 a.m., running up to the, uh, the um, Frankfurt open at 7 a.m. and then the UK open in uh, approximately seven minutes now, 8 a.m., then uh, you uh, expect this to drift to a level that the big boys want to play. And as you can see at 7 a.m., then we had a huge uh, move down. And uh, so that's why timing is really important as well. So I wanted to see this to, to enable me to trade this to the downside. I wanted to see either it to continue straight down fast, um, in which case, personally, I would use the five minute to check, you know, to watch the five minute move down, then watch the one minute pull back. If the five minute pulls back against itself again, it will start to put them all out of alignment. But if the one minute and five minute then uh, come back into alignment to the downside, you're good to go to the downside. So it's all about watching the pullbacks. Support and resistance broken will cause a pullback. It nearly always does on every time frame, unless you know it's news related, and then the price will just take off for whatever reason. So that's it, guys. You know this went straight out of alignment. It could have come back into alignment, in which case I would have wanted to see this have a. This is effectively a bust down, a pullback, and then I would have wanted to see momentum break through the low of that. Not necessarily the 20, because that's just an arbitrary level, 18 or 19. Who knows? what should be the perfect level um, but it's more important to see the price bust through that potentially a new five minute three cr to the downside uh, possibly because you shouldn't have had a three cr on the 15 minute but always check that too but momentum is what precedes price so uh, a momentum uh, kick down would have given me um, the uh, perfect potential entry for that so that's it We'll always keep one eye on this. Make sure it's always aligned. I won't go into what trade I took, but when this started to fail, price moves one way. Uh, let's say, for example, in this example, Euro was showing strength. So just find a JPY uh, pair that has uh, is showing um, weakness. So uh, something like, well, I think I looked at GP uh, pound, JPY, and uh, that was the perfect looking trade for the other direction. Same goes for GU, I think that was looking interesting. But all you've got to look for then is something similar to the H4 uh, with this. Make sure the H4 is down. I'll just remind you of what, what that was like. And you're not necessarily looking for a wick, you're just looking for H4 strength. And then you're looking for the alignment, as I said, on every time frame. And, um, well, we could have a look at G, uh, G, G, uh, A, I think it was. So that, that did go down. And, uh, so let's have a look at H4. H4 was red, as you can see. And then H1. Uh, at that time was red also M30 remember that red line is the open of the bar so we're all good M30 was good too M15 was uh, good too at 6am so as you can see the other one had gone out of uh, sync this one was just coming into sync so when um, that M15 there, there, agreed 
then we're good to go to the short side. And uh, we've still got what, 15 minutes uh, prior to the, um, the 7 a.m. bar. Uh, we've got uh, all the other sort of uh, indicators, so it's perfectly good for a scalp, and that's what it did in this case. Something, uh, you know, that that move there is massive. I took five or six pips out of it, but uh, that's a 20 pip move. So hopefully that will make some um, light bulbs go off for you. You know, I post uh, these potential setups, but they can reverse on a sixpence. That doesn't mean I'm wrong. It just means uh, it didn't do what I expected it to do. Um, but the charts, and in particular, the, mo uh, the um, momentum indicator, this is why it's so powerful. So thanks for watching. I hope um, uh, that was worthwhile for you, and uh, have a good day.